Into the Inklands is out, and all I've been hearing about is what decks will be the top tier decks when everything settles. And more importantly, will Ruby Amethyst finally be put to rest and fall out of its dominating position at the top? Jim Hawkins, Space Traveler, Madame Medusa the Boss, Agrabah Marketplace, and the Queen's Castle Mirror Chamber are the four new cards we've mixed into this. Jim comes down at five, bringing along with it one of the two locations. But ideally, you want to get the Queen's Castle into play as soon as possible. Madame Medusa is very similar to Lady Tremaine in being a 6-drop, unequable character that destroys something when entering play. But unlike Lady Tremaine, we get to choose the thing, provided that that thing's strength is 3 or less. AKA, Madame Medusa is a beast tragic hero destroyer. Agrabah Marketplace is primarily here to net us extra lore, but to also add consistency to our Jim Hawkins. And finally, the Queen's Castle Mirror Chamber is perhaps the best location in Inklands. For each character at this location, we get to draw an extra card at the start of our turn. If your opponent lets this snowball for even a few turns, they'll likely find themselves in a world of hurt. I really can't stress enough how powerful the Queen's Castle really is. Starting your turn with one extra card draw is cool, but drawing four or more cards at the start of your turn is absolutely backbreaking for your opponent to deal with. The rest of this deck is your standard Ruby Amethyst control shell, with all the Mims and Merlins to bounce and control the board. Teeth and Ambitions is the slowdown aggro matchup. Be prepared to truly control things, and don't forget about Maui, hero to all, who is extra potent when it comes to deleting locations on the other side of the board. Is Red Purple still good enough? I don't even think that's a question. Before we jump into the game, Forever Uninkable shirts are now available. I have a link in the description down below. It should be the first link, I believe, if I've done this correctly. Uh, hoodies, kit size shirts. This one's a front and back, so there's something on the back. Uh, the back one's a large size image of this guy. You can get this version of the shirt with just the large one in the front or one with just the chest piece. Super excited about that. Forever Uninkable. Description down below. Okay, Emerald Steel. Likely going to be the infinite combo. Seems like everyone's obsessed with it. And wow, like almost no one drops. We're going to put everything back. Except for Maleficent, which happens to be literally the cheapest thing. There's lots of one drops in the deck. And it's not possible to see them. I can't read these sideways cards. At the start of your turn, each character you have here, you may draw a card. Okay. If I could read it, it would be better. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to ink the snake since I can't play it on turn two anyway. That is a lot of Maui's. Really not great for this particular matchup. Maui wants to take out the locations for sure. And our opponent likely isn't playing any locations. <laughs> it's going to be all... Removal and infinite combo. Maleficent. All right, well, this is going to be a turn behind. And perhaps I will develop this. I expect this to turn into beast. Tragic hero, sure enough, there it is. That's what the dragon fires for. But it is a turn behind. It is a goat. I was likely always going to be inking that one. <sighs> Got another one. My goodness. All right, I got a dragon fire for this beast now. Just like any other good red purple, we're just going to control this board until my opponent can't do squat. That's what red purple's good at. We'll see if it's still good in this. Okay, it doesn't destroy my location. There you go. Consuming all my opponent's resources, and now their beast is dead. Hmm, that's a good target for that, but... 
Let's start here. Ha! Dragonfire! A card nobody expects to see anymore. Oh, and I got a new questy thingy. Purple or what was it? it? Was was it was purple footsteps before, right? Another beastie boy. When you when you play this character, banish chosen opposing character with three strength or less. Well, that happens to be a beast. <laughs> you know, I think I'd rather have a fox. Than a Maui. Goodbye, Beastie. Madam Medusa. Taking out the Beastie Boy. Now I have green horseshoes. The lucky horseshoes. Chief Bogo. Alright, opponent's almost out of resources. Dude, Jim Hawkins with the free location and the free move. I will. Well, if it's Tinkerbell, which it could be, we'll take out Madame Medusa, then take out Maleficent. So we're gonna we're gonna hold off. See if it is Tinkerbell, it's not enough to take it to take down the Queen's castle. That'll be two more cards for me. And what do you do? Whenever this character quests, you may do three damage to chosen damaged character. Oh, nice. Really good combo, Chief Bogo. That'll take out Jim Hawkins for sure. Yeah, super cool combo. I like that. Hmm, Bayou is the quest, draw, discard, yep. So it's a piece of the combo. I like it a lot. Okay, so I got a couple options here. If I play the fox, bounce Meta Medusa, I can destroy trade here. And then I'll have Madame Medusa will take out Chief Bogo the following turn. That's it. Let's quest first. Good trade. And if I ink Jim, really nothing happens. So I will pass the turn. And now that we know Chief Bogo is pretty much gone. So they may as well quest with him. Alright, this is looking very good for us. I do like that Madame Medusa is a choice. Let's quest here. Let's ink a goat. And in case they want to make the trade, I'll have another character at the castle. Alright, looking very good for us. If our opponent finds a whole new world, we could be in back in a predicament again. It's another piece of the combo. But I have a dragon fire. Draw and discard deals the damage, so that'll, that'll get rid of Maleficent. We're probably very likely playing Dragonfire to get rid of the Sheriff of Nottingham. We don't want them to find the infinite combo. Oh, and the teeth isn't bad either. But I think ultimately we're definitely playing this. We're going to for force my opponent to concede here. Take away all their pieces. 
They don't have a prayer. Let's do it like this. Alright, red purple control is just taking over a game as it should. I have a feeling red purple is definitely still a contender. Look at this, I'm not even worried about like taking out more for anything. Oh, that feels really good. Once you get multiple characters on the Queen's Castle, holy smokes. Uh, let's see, I quest for two, I play a goat, I bounce the goat. So it's not victory, but it is close. I think we'll wait on that and play Jim Hawkins and seal the game. Put you on the location as well. I think at this point I'm just questing and then the game's over next turn. Yeah, I have six on board, so my opponent has to deal with what's on board. They don't even know about the Merlin and the snake. Red purple control. It's definitely still going to be a thing. It still feels strong. And the queen's castle does not make it feel any weaker. Isn't it whenever it quests? Yeah, you should have shifted out a morph. Could have at least taken out Cusco. Yep. The old whoopsie. Yeah, the, go ahead and say whoops and then concede. <laughs> well, card draw is definitely not a problem in this deck. That's fantastic. They think they have stopped me, which is great. My goodness, there's so much. The card draw is ridiculous. And goat victory. Okay. So what is this? Some kind of ramp aggro? Or just aggro? Usually when I see these colors together, I'm thinking some kind of aggro deck. Alright, I would really like to... I think it's going to be an aggro deck of some sort. So I'd really like to see a one drop here, please. There we go. There's enough in the deck that should be a lot more consistent than they've been feeling. Alright, I really want the Queen's Castle. I think my two drop is going to end up being... Snake or Teeth, depending on what my opponent does. See if I played into this correctly. Locations! Zero one ward, okay. Need to ink. Quest, snake, bounce, pass. Now I got an ink for next turn. Ray. That is pretty aggro. Uh, I do have a couple of songs. They're gonna take the be prepared. That is A okay with me. With Jim Hawkins. Okay, couple of characters, couple more ink. Keep the cards coming. So now, see, a part of me wants to play castle on four, but there's not a lot you can do with it. You're just kind of leaving it out there to be attacked. If I play it on five, I can't afford to move a character. But if I also play Jim, character moves there for free. So it's the same value. So I think... Ultimately, you just wait for Jim. I think it's just a better play. Yeah, we'll take out every character we can. Well, let's see. Crab is slightly better, but it doesn't replace himself. All their characters have one toughness. I bet you their deck is just awful against Steel, which is super unfortunate for them because I would also wager that, uh, they play against Steel a lot. <laughs> How could you not? Steel's got like all of the best cards. We got a shift. What else does he do? 
That's it? Just a shift? Okay. No evasive. No, you know it. We're taking out their board. Uh, so I'm going to discard a card. This is just going to trade with whoever attacks it. And I'm not taking that out. Okay. That's the biggest threat. They're all really big threats, let's be honest. I don't have to worry about that because I could just play Medusa next turn. So let's get Jim down. Get the location in place. Let's move him to the location. And effectively, I'm just trading these two characters. For that, I will discard the fox. And I'll quest. Alright, opponent got a pretty good solid lead there. But as red purple should do, we are just about under control here. McDuck Manor could be a little bit of an issue. I'll have to throw everything I have at it. All right, Medusa. Oh, it's got Ward. Of course it does. And we will just take it out then. Set you up for defeat next turn. Unfortunately, I'd love to draw a ton of cards here, but I didn't. I just didn't have enough ink to do it all. Couple Flynn's. Hopefully won't be too much of a problem. Let's see, it has six left. I need to do six damage. Don't really have a good clean way of getting that down. So it's going to be you. It's going to be you. Let's ink you. Slow my opponent down as much as possible. Put as many characters on the location to draw as many cards as I can. Alright. Plus seven. Does that count this, I wonder? Two, three, four, five, six, seven. It does count that. Alright, now we're about to draw three cards. Four with our cards for turn. Opponent gave me the well played. <laughs> we'll see if it's enough. Uh, there's well, there is a shift target, but the big Flynn's not going to do anything. I mean, I'm likely just taking it out anyway, right? Just to be safe. Hmm. Yeah, let's lay to Tremaine. Good. That is the one I probably would have targeted anyway. And now I have five characters at the Queen's Castle. That is six cards on my following turn. And the concession, of course! Fantastic!